Yeah, g'day all. I've got the Gold Cruiser here. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for a bit more information on this machine, which has been out for a little while now, but it's still pretty new. Um, yeah, so I'll just do a, a little rundown of some of the features and uh, we'll uh, show you how it runs. So yeah, first of all, it's five meters waterproof. Um, comes with wireless headphones, but the, those headphones are not waterproof. There are optional waterproof headphones as an accessory if you want to go get down in uh, in a creek or down in the water somewhere. Uh, so it's got an S bend shaft, nice armrest with a armrest strap. Um, it's a three piece shaft, so you've got the top S bit, the middle section and then the lower shaft, so you can pack it up nice and compact. Uh, the lower stem is carbon fibre, so very light and very strong. Um, the box being waterproof, everything's all in the one box, which includes the lithium battery should give you about 16 hours runtime off a charge um, now if you want to plug in um, some of the headphones of your choice then you've got this little adapter lead with quarter inch um, socket and the way I've mounted it, um, I've used an old little U-bracket and just sort of clicked it upside down. Uh, but you can tape it up, you can you can zip tie it to the stem, uh, whatever you like. Now on it at the moment is uh, the seven and a half by four inch elliptical coil which comes with the machine and you also get the 10x5 uh, which is a concentric so the concentric give you a bit more depth uh, but better for you know, milder ground more open areas where I like to use a VLF is in little washouts um, scrubby areas um, and yeah the little elliptical is the choice for that and that was my favourite coil on the on the previous gold racer as well. All right, so on the front panel, I won't go through everything. Just really quickly, we've got an on-off uh, ground balance button here. Just above that is pinpoint, but the thing um, it has such sharp audio that I don't think many people are going to use pinpoint. Maybe in the if you're using this machine to hunt for jewelry in one of the discrimination modes, you might use the pinpoint. Uh, volume up and down, that's a permanent adjustment. Um, what I mean by that is you don't have to go in the menu to adjust the volume. Uh, whenever you're detecting, you can just use the up and down and adjust your volume, which is quite handy. Um, then we've got a a boost button so if you get a faint signal and you want to double check it um, you can temporarily engage the boost and then we've got settings options button to access some of the settings all right it's a very nice compact machine very well built um, the handle is is quite sort of rubbery so it's got a nice grip to it. Um, now being fully waterproof, even if you don't intend to do any water hunting with it, the beauty of that means it's also dustproof. Now being a gold detector, um, it always gets dusty. So you can get home and you can hose it down. Um, yeah, and clean it up and keep it looking like new. All right, so we'll, we'll take it out and I'll uh, I'll show you how it runs. All 
All right, so to get this thing um, running, we just turn the on off, press the on off button. LD means load. When it's happy, you'll hear the threshold turn on. Now, all the settings are down here. Just press the settings button. And we've got gain, 75. And using the plus and minus here, we can adjust that up or down as required. Um, using the up and down arrows, just scrolls us down the menu so next one is threshold pretty straightforward you don't want it too loud and you don't want it off either you want it where you just hear that faint smooth hum because that's your reference uh, next one down is our ISAP Now if you go flat out, it smooths it so much that you actually lose the threshold. So you want that as low as possible, um, but just to maintain a nice stable threshold. I find usually two or three is two or three is plenty. Depending on the ground, depending on where you where you gain, your sensitivity is set. So all we really need to do is do a ground balance. So you just hold the ground balance button in, pump the coil up and down, close to the ground, and when the detector gives you a beep, it tells you it's ready. Now, what I've got there, 0.1 gram little prickly piece of gold all right now yeah, just in the forest here so we'll go somewhere where uh, we actually might have a chance of finding something and show you how it runs on some mineralized ground Very nice, positive, zippy. Um, I just turned the threshold up, so we hit settings, find threshold in the list. I'll go flat out. Now this is through the headphones, as I say, there's a lot of volume on this machine. Um, now, when when the little square sort of indicator of, of where you actually are, when it's at the top, that's when you can switch between general, fast, boost and micro modes. Um, but in that up there, you've, you've permanently got control over your um, volume. So volume is just up and down. So if you want to go into settings or the other more advanced options you've got to press the settings button it will jump in settings you press settings again and it jumps into options if you press it again it jumps back to the top so when it's up the top uh, we can adjust our volume up and down so with headphones um, this thing's very loud and I'm getting plenty of volume on uh, three I'll turn it up flat out now this is through headphones I reckon a, a prospector over the other side of the hill would hear that all right I'll just show you what the how the ground sounds like so down here we've got uh, GB for ground balance 
So that's our ground balance button. The beeping means it's happy. I usually let it go for two or three beeps just to make sure. There's another target. Alright, we'll dig that one later. Now you can see how smooth that's running. Um, now I'm on 77 on the gain, which is pretty high. And I sat on two, which is pretty low. So quite aggressive settings. Now we'll get into the high 80s. Now it goes to 99 as maximum. So we're very, very off on the sensitivity. Now that there, where the threshold drops and then you get a signal, that's just a hot rock. You can pretty much ignore those. Now on the ID, it's coming up 99, which that's what a hot rock is, really high or very low. Safe to ignore that. Now, where it's not very safe is if there is a little nugget under that, down at depth, um, it's probably not going to see it. So if it's a hot rock on the surface, you can just kick them out of the way uh, and recheck. Now it's not super hot ground we're in here, um, but it's it's not mild either. So for a very high frequency VLF, this is handling the ground very nicely. Now that there, nice little faint signal. Threshold's not nulling out. That's something I would investigate. Now, when the signal's very faint, you you won't get an ID on the on the screen because it, it you know it's not getting enough of a signal there to uh, to work out what it what it is. So I'll give that a little bit of a scrape with the boot. Now the ground under there is fairly red, so I'll just do a ground balance next to it. Seventy-one. Now that's pretty good. I'll have to get the pick and uh, give that a scrape. Let's see what we got. I've got it out of the hole and uh, yeah, it's not sounding too promising now. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's definitely, uh, it's not obviously a hot rock, but it's not obviously a target, so it's still investigate it. Well, the hole's, fill the hole's filled in. That's all it was. A little hot rock. But it's given a funny old signal, so uh, that'll go in the dolly pot. You never know. But yeah, I hope that gives you a bit of an idea of uh, how it runs and stay tuned for more videos.